Welcome to the second module of the Krona e-learning course, Industrial Temperature Measurement. In this module, we will take a detailed look at the temperature measurement sensors used in process technology. But first, let's look briefly at our learning targets in this course module. At the end of, at the end of this module, we will have learned which contact measurement methods are used today to measure temperature correctly. In the first section, we'll take a look at traditional mechanical measuring techniques and then move on to the current measurement method using thermocouples. The next point will then be the production and use of mineral insulated cables and the use of compensation cables, followed by a detailed description of the resistance thermometer. A brief summary of all we'll have learned will then close this first module. So, now let's get started. Let's look now. Let's look now at contact temperature measurement. In the contact method, the sensor is brought into contact with the measuring medium, either directly or via a heat transfer medium. Before the sensor can display the correct medium temperature, it must first be brought by heat transfer to the temperature of the substance. This process takes time, which is why contact temperature measurement is always characterized by delayed response times. In the contact method, we must always distinguish between electrical and mechanical measurement. Mechanical measuring techniques are based on the expansion or deformation of substances under the influence of temperature. Electrical measuring techniques either rely on the physical effect of thermovoltage, which occurs when two different metals are connected and heated, or use the well-known phenomenon of the resistance of substances changing at a higher temperature. For the sake of completeness, we should mention at this point that there are other processes to measure temperature, for example with electromagnetic waves or ultrasonic sound, since the runtime behavior of these waves depends on temperature. These techniques are, however, only found in niche applications in process measurement technology. Mechanical Mechanical measuring techniques utilize the fact that substances expand as the temperature rises. The mercury in a classic mercury thermometer expands in a glass capillary along a scale. In a bimetal thermometer, two differently expanding metals are connected. As the temperature rises, one of the metals expands more than the other. This results in a mechanical deformation, which can be made visible with an indicator needle. Tension thermometers use the expansion of a gas or liquid reservoir and transmit the ensuing increase in pressure over a capillary to a mechanical display unit. Thermocouples and resistance thermometers are the most widely used temperature measuring techniques in industrial measurement technology. We can kick off by having a closer look at the functional principle of the thermocouple. In a separate section, we'll also examine the compensation cables, which are often needed for connecting the thermocouple correctly. We can follow this by looking at resistance thermometers. The thermo, the thermo, or TC, is the most widely used electrical temperature measuring technique. Two conductors made of dissimilar metals are welded together at one end while the other end remains open and is connected to a voltmeter. The welded end is also known as the measuring point, or hot junction. The open end is called the reference junction, or cold junction. If the two ends find themselves in areas with different temperatures, the electrons in the metals move differently, and a thermovoltage, which is proportional to the temperature difference, can be read off at the voltmeter. The, ind the ind metal wires of the thermocouple are known as thermolegs. The combination of two thermolegs is a thermocouple. The thermolegs are usually connected at the tip of the sensor in the transition point to a plug-in socket. From here, a special compensation cable completes the connection to the reference junction, 
an area with known constant temperature, where a voltmeter is connected. When the hot end or hot junction of the thermocouple is heated, it is possible to measure a direct voltage on the other side of the wires, the cold end or cold junction. This thermovoltage is proportional to the difference in temperature between the hot and cold ends, and is dependent on the material used for the thermocouple. As the compensation cable in a restricted temperature range has the same properties as a thermocouple, the measured value will not be distorted by an additionally generated thermoelectric voltage. An external current source is not necessary for this measurement. In an, in an electrical conductor which is exposed to a temperature gradient, the electrical charges shift along the gradient, an effect known as thermal diffusion. Macroscopically measurable effects occur at the combination of differing materials. If the two conductors are joined at one end, the open end connected to a voltmeter and the transition points heated to different temperatures, the thermoelectricity appears as a thermovoltage. This physical phenomenon is known as the Seebeck effect. As you can see in the diagram, in most cases, the magnitude of the thermovoltage grows linearly to the increasing temperature difference between measuring point and reference junction. The thermoelectric voltage is also dependent on the material selected for the wires. At temperature differences of 100 Kelvin for metal-metal combinations, voltages of up to several millivolts can be measured. For measuring per for measuring purposes, material combinations are selected which, in combination, have a high thermoelectric voltage, which, ideally, increases linearly as the temperature rises. The material should also be very stable mechanically and have excellent corrosion resistance. Unfortunately, a material combination will not achieve these objectives over a wide temperature range. Consequently, depending on the application, different material combinations are used which have proved successful in practice. The diagram shows standard thermocouples and their application areas. For example, the substance combination shown here as a blue bar. Platinum rhodium alloy with 30% rhodium and platinum rhodium alloy with 6% rhodium is a suitable combination in the temperature range of 0 to 1800 degrees Celsius. This material combination is generally given the material designation type B, and we speak of a thermocouple type B. Other frequently used thermocouples are types K and J. Color and, color and letter recognition for thermocouples was introduced to enable the simple identification of the different types of thermocouple in practice. While the letter recognition is uniform, the color coding varies according to the standard applied. Temperature application ranges of the thermocouple types marked with a letter are shown at the bottom of the table. Here you can read below the letters the temperature range for continuous operation and for short-term loads of a thermocouple type. As you can see in the first line, a thermocouple type K is used in the range from 0 to 1000 degrees Celsius and can sustain short-term loads of minus 180 to plus 1300 degrees Celsius. The thermocouples are marked by color according to DIN, IEC, ANSI, JIS, or DIN. The color coding refers not only to the color of the external marking, but also to the colors of the individual thermo legs. We can look at another example. According to DIN IEC, a black cable with one white and one black wire signifies a J type thermocouple. The following thermocouples are very widely used. Iron, copper, nickel, with the designation type J, are used for more accurate industrial applications in the temperature range of minus 50 to 750 degrees Celsius. Nickel, chrome, nickel, type K, is the most common type. The practical range of applications lies between 0 and approximately 1000 degrees Celsius.
And platinum rhodium platinum, or type S, which is used for high temperatures of up to 1,600 degrees Celsius. To measure very high temperatures above 1,600 degrees Celsius, thermocouples are used with iridium, iridium alloy, or rhodium, and tungsten rhenium alloy. Thermolegs of gold, iron nickel, chrome, gold, iron gold, or silver are used to measure very low temperatures of under minus 250 degrees Celsius. Now, nowadays, thermocouples are made almost exclusively of mineral insulated cables, which are also called MI cables or mantle cables. These are multi core cables. With a sheath of stainless steel in which a ceramic core with the various thermo wires is embedded. The ceramic material acts as insulation between the wires. Mineral insulated cables are produced by filling wide, thick walled tubes with perforated ceramic bodies and pushing millimeter thick thermo wires in the perforations through the tube. The pipe is then sealed and gradually reduced by drawing machines and annealing processes to smaller nominal diameters of 8 to 0.25 millimeters. In the process, the ceramics shatter and nestle tightly around the thermo wires as insulation. MI cable is flexible enough to be stored as roll goods and shipped. In thermo In thermocouple production, the mineral insulated cable is unwound and straightened on a straightening jig, shortened, and the thermo wires in the connection area exposed. An epoxy resin protects the exposed ceramic area from moisture and loss of insulation resistance. In the sensor area, the hot end, the ceramics are partly removed, and the corresponding thermo wires joined and welded. As you can see in the sectional drawing, the hot end with the welding bead is then filled with ceramic powder and protected by a tightly welded cap against media contact. On the right of the picture is the measuring tip of a typical thermocouple with 6 mm external diameter. Clearly visible is the welded junction of the thermo legs. Depending Depending on the area of application, the measuring tips of the thermocouples are also designed differently. The most frequent universal design is the insulated measuring tip, where the thermocouple is completely enclosed in insulation material without touching the outer sheath. This construction is extremely impervious to mechanical and chemical loads and can therefore be used in most applications. This encapsulation, however, has a negative effect on the response times, as the thermocouple is thermally insulated, which leads to delayed response times. A smaller diameter can solve this problem. If, however, the welding bead in the thermocouple touches the metal sheath, although the response time may be shortened considerably and the mechanical protection remains intact, noise signals are picked up more and more over the grounded metal sheath. The grounded design is often used in power plant boilers and steam generators. The mechanical stability of this construction is, however, lower. The design with free measuring tip offers extremely short response times, but offers practically no protection to the thermocouple, which reduces dramatically the operating temperatures and conditions. Consequently, this design cannot be used, for example, in an environment containing water. Or steam. With thermocouples, the temperature difference between the measuring point and the reference junction is deduced from the measured thermoelectric voltage between the two thermo legs. The thermoelectric voltage measured at the reference junction is directly proportional to the temperature difference between the measuring point and reference junction. The reference junction is where the thermo wires or compensation cables are connected to the copper lines or the transducer. For the temperature of the measuring point to be determined accurately, the temperature of the reference junction must be known and included when calculating the measuring point temperature. In practice, the reference junction is found directly at the connecting terminals of the measuring transducer, the display, or the processing electronics.
The transducer measures the reference junction temperature with a reference resistor and compensates the influence of temperature at the reference junction. In older installations, the reference junctions of the thermocouples are often in thermostats. Here, the compensation cable is connected to heated terminals, whose constant temperature is known, for example, 60 degrees Celsius. From there, the copper line wiring can proceed. The electronics measures the reference junction temperature of the thermostat and takes it into account for determining the correct temperature at the measuring point. The material. The materials used in the thermo legs of a thermocouple are usually very expensive. For this reason, efforts are being made constantly to keep thermo legs as short as possible and to transfer the thermoelectric voltage rapidly onto a cheap copper line. Unfortunately, this creates a new thermocouple between the material of the thermo legs and the line copper, which would then distort the original thermoelectric voltage of the thermocouple. The remedy, as you can see in the diagram, is to use a compensation cable as a connection between the thermo legs and the reference junction. In other words, the compensation cable bridges the distance between the terminal head of a thermocouple and the transducer and is thus not exposed to the prevailing temperatures at the measuring point. The conductor of the compensation cables is made of low price substitute materials, which are not identical with the corresponding thermocouples, but which, in a permitted limited temperature range, have the same thermoelectrical properties as the materials in the thermo legs. The coding of the thermo and compensation cables is standardized according to country. Standardization helps reduce the risk of confusion and false polarity. Compensation. Compensation cables have either solid or stranded conductors and are produced with a differing number of wires, shielding, and insulation. Color coding simplifies identification of the compensation cables. Wrongly selected or wrongly polled compensation cables can result in serious measurement errors. In the following table, we can see some examples of possible measuring errors caused by accidentally confusing a thermocouple, line, or polarity. In the calculation of the errors, only a difference in temperature between measuring point and reference junction of 50 degrees Celsius would be accepted. For example, looking at the top line of the table, If a thermocouple type J with the correct polarity is connected to a compensation cable type K, a measurement error of up to minus 10 degrees Celsius can occur. The mistake is more serious if a type K thermocouple with correct polarity is connected to a type J compensation cable. The measurement errors can be up to plus 20 degrees Celsius. If a thermocouple is connected to the wrong kind of compensation cable and the polarity is also incorrect, as in line 4, the measurement error can soar to minus 110 degrees Celsius. These examples make it clear how important it is when connecting a thermocouple to pay attention to using the correct material combination and polarity. Now that we've Now that we've become acquainted with thermocouples as one of the most important measuring techniques in contact electrical temperature measuring technology, we can turn to a second widely used measuring technique the resistance thermometer. The resistance, therm the resistance thermometer, RTD, uses a measuring resistor to determine the temperature. An extremely low current, I, flows over a measuring resistor made of precisely defined material. If the temperature to which the measuring resistor is exposed changes, its overall resistance and also the measurable voltage drop, U. The change in the measured voltage drop is proportional to the temperature change in the measuring resistor. In resistance In resistance thermometers, the temperature dependent change in the resistance of electrical conductors is also used as a measuring principle. 
Resistance thermometers are characterized by a wide measuring range from minus 220 to plus 850 degrees Celsius and very high measuring accuracies to 0.001 Kelvin. In the process industry, PT100 are generally used up to 600 degrees Celsius. PT500 and 1000 as a rule up to 400 degrees Celsius. If, for example, a measuring resistor PT100 is heated by the measuring material, its resistance climbs quasi-linearly with the temperature, as we can see in the diagram. As it is not, po as it is not possible to measure the resistance directly, with the help of a constant current source, a current flows over the measuring resistor, and the voltage drop is measured. With Ohm's law, the resistance can be calculated from the voltage drop. Care must be taken that the resistor element is not subjected to self-heating from the current. In order to minimize this self-heating error, current flowing over the measuring resistor should be kept small, in any case under 1 milliampere. Finally, the temperature to which the measuring resistor is exposed ensues from the resistance measured. At the heart of every, at the heart of every resistance thermometer is the measuring resistor in the tip of the sensor. As with the thermocouple, the basic material is a mineral insulated cable, which however has line wires of the same material, for example copper or nickel. The connection side with the open wire ends to the plug-in socket is installed like the thermocouple. In the measuring tip, the measuring resistor at the lead wires is lasered and the measuring tip re-welded with a metal cap. The space between the sensor element and the outer sheath is filled with magnesium or aluminium oxide powder, so the sensor sits tightly and has good thermal contact with the sheath. In practice, wound platinum resistor elements and thin film measurement resistors are used as measuring resistors, as platinum, with its high temperature resistance, excellent repeatability and mechanical stability, has already proved its worth. In the case, in the case, a wound RTDs, we distinguish between the ceramic design and the glass design, which is only very rarely used today. Wire-wound ceramic measuring resistors consist of a two-hole ceramic capillary into which a platinum coil is introduced. The lead wires are fixed with enamel and the coil hermetically sealed. In the production of wound glass measuring resistors, a glass thorn is wound with a platinum wire and then heat shrinked with a thin glass pipe, so the platinum coil is enclosed in glass. These durable resistors can be manufactured with great precision, mostly by hand under the microscope, which accounts for the high price. Wound measuring resistors have a relatively high weight and large dimensions, which makes them more liable to vibration cracking, and their response times are slower than other resistors. Whereas wound ceramic measuring resistors are still widely used today, for economic reasons, wound glass resistors were replaced by thin film measurement resistors. Besides wire-wound wire resistors, thin film resistors are increasingly in use today. They cover wide temperature ranges, and the common application temperatures are up to 500 degrees Celsius, occasionally up to 850 degrees Celsius. Thin film resistors are produced in a highly automated process by screen printing, vaporizing, or sputtering platinum onto a ceramic substrate. As a rule, for thin film measurement resistors, a platinum layer is evaporated onto a ceramic substrate. Then the film is laser meandered, whereby a large number of measuring resistors are created on a single substrate, which must later be separated. After the application of platinum and meandering, every resistor is measured individually and trimmed with the aid of a laser to an exact resistance. The thin film resistors are then covered with several passivation and glass layers. The lead wires are attached to contact pads and also provided with a protective cover. 
The protective layers on the thin film resistors prevent contamination and damage to the sensitive measuring lines. Thin film resistors have a small mass and are thus less susceptible to vibration or powerful acceleration. They also align very quickly to the temperature of the measuring material. In some applications, thin film resistors can be used directly without additional safety measures, e.g., in gas temperature measurement. Now let us bring. Now let us briefly summarize what we've learned in this second module on industrial temperature measurement. We know now that contact measurement technology is divided into mechanical and electrical methods. We've seen temperature measurement methods, and know the build-up and the working principles of the thermocouple. We've been acquainted with mineral insulated cables and the use of compensating cables. We also have learned how a resistance thermometer works. Congratulations! You now know the main.